Hey guys, let's get more news about Steelers, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Three Worst Contracts on the Steelers Roster in 2024 The Pittsburgh Steelers are not immune from making questionable financial decisions. This goes for the new front office heads too. As impressive as general manager Omar Khan and assistant GM Andy Weidel have been early in their new roles, they have handed out a few contracts that have some fans scratching their heads. It's no surprise to see the Steelers spend the vast majority of the team's salary cap on the defensive side of the ball. Unfortunately, some of this money would be better utilized elsewhere. In the case of one contract, the price Pittsburgh was forced to pay to keep a star player around was out of their control. Let's dissect the three worst contracts on the Steelers' roster entering the 2024 season. When the Steelers signed Larry Ogunjobi to a one-year, $8 million contract during the 2022 offseason, I was excited about what he would bring to the team. The nimble defensive lineman was coming off a career year with the Bengals, which included 49 tackles, 7.0 sacks, 12 tackles for a loss, and 16 quarterback hits. Unfortunately, my excitement quickly turned to disgust when the Steelers inked Ogunjobi to a three-year, $28.75 million extension after an unspectacular first season in Pittsburgh. Not only was Ogunjobi quiet on the stat sheet, but his overall impact on the defense was often unnoticed. Somehow, after earning just 1.5 sacks and 7 TFLs in 2022, Omar Khan felt it necessary to lock up Ogunjobi at $9.58 million per season just because the defensive line group in free agency started drying up in 2023. While Ogunjobi has started and played 33 of 34 games over the past two seasons for the Steelers, he simply isn't worth the contract he received from the team last offseason. His $13.28 million cap number in 2024 is the fourth largest on the team this year. Don't confuse having a bad contract for being a bad player. It's not Minka Fitzpatrick's fault that the going rate for top safeties is as high as it is. Unfortunately, because of today's quick passing game, the safety position has never been more devalued in the NFL. When Minka inked his four-year extension, it was for a whopping $18.2 million per season. However, these numbers look significantly worse after Pittsburgh restructured his deal. Minka has a lofty $21.355 million cap number for the 2024 season. This goes up to $22.355 million in 2025 and $24.455 million in 2026. Even for arguably the league's best safety, this is too much money to dish out to a position that doesn't rank high on the list of the most important positions in the league. When the Steelers signed Cole Holcomb to a three-year, $18 million deal during the 2023 offseason, I had no issue with this move. Holcomb was an athletic and versatile linebacker who offered a bit of everything at a reasonable cost. Unfortunately, this is one of those decisions that doesn't look as good in hindsight. Had we known the Steelers were going to fork up for a Pro Bowl linebacker in Patrick Queen and spend a third-round pick on All-American LB Peyton Wilson, they probably would have never made the move for Holcomb. Now the veteran linebacker is attempting to work his way back from a gruesome knee injury he suffered halfway through 2023. With the seventh-highest cap number on the team in 2024, Holcomb needs to return to the field and have a strong season for Pittsburgh to get their money's worth. Everything you need to know from the Steelers' first two weeks of training camp, standouts, injuries, and more. Perhaps the biggest story of training camp has been presumed starting quarterback Russell Wilson's calf, which he strained while pushing a sled prior to camp. He's slowly been working his way back, but has yet to fully participate. Still, he and the Steelers don't seem all too concerned, with Wilson stating that he'd definitely be able to play if it was a game. He's reportedly looked sharp in the limited reps he's received, and finally threw a bit in 11 on 11 on August 4. Wilson's injury has opened up the door for Justin Fields to take the vast majority of snaps as starting quarterback. 
Opinions have varied, but most have reported that Fields continues to be a highlight real machine who still needs to improve on the little things to live up to his immense potential. Short accuracy and decision-making continue to be an issue, but his deep ball and rushing ability are elite. He has been slowly improving throughout camp, including an electric Friday Night Lights performance. In short, while he is trending upwards, Fields continues to be who he was in Chicago for better and worse. Fans will be happy to learn that he's also been forming a strong connection with star wideout George Pickens. As of now, Wilson is and should be the overwhelming favorite to start Week 1, but Fields is slowly making believers out of Steelers' media members. Still, Pittsburgh's quarterback situation currently has far more questions than answers. As for the other two quarterbacks on the roster, Kyle Allen has quietly had a solid camp, although he's cooled down lately, that should have Steelers fans content with their QB3. The versatile Plum Lee has seen some work as a returner, which could be something to monitor in the preseason. Despite being initially disappointed in the Steelers turning down his fifth-year option, Harris has reportedly looked good in camp. Jalen Warren has similarly impressed, still bringing the same high-effort playing style that landed him a roster spot with the Steelers as a UDFA back in 2022. Friday's Backs on Backers was reportedly a must-watch event. As for other backs on the roster, Corderell Patterson started camp on the non-football injury, NFI, list with a hamstring issue. It's unclear when he'll return, but he's been able to run at practice and seems to be on the road to recovery. Fullback Jack Coletto has gone from a camp sleeper to a player with a rock-solid chance at a roster spot, impressing across several days and earning starting reps Aaron Shamplin has reportedly impressed in training camp, but it'll be an uphill battle for a spot on the final 53. He's been a standout among several practice squad-eligible names, however. Steelers to work out former Browns WR on Monday. Steelers players may have an off day on Monday, but the front office does not. Per NFL insider Aaron Wilson, the Steelers are bringing in wide receiver Dalen Baldwin for a workout on August 5. Baldwin played collegiately for Morgan State, Jackson State, and Michigan, recording 17 catches for 256 yards and two touchdowns in his final NCAA season as a Wolverine. The 6 feet 2 inches, 212-pound receiver ran a 4.65-second 40-yard dash at his pro day, going undrafted in 2022. He signed with the Browns in August that year, spending most of the season on their practice squad but appearing in one game, where he caught both of his targets for 25 receiving yards. Baldwin hasn't appeared in a regular season game since, being waived by Cleveland ahead of the 2023 season and later spending time with the Vikings and Falcons. However, his time in Atlanta came after Arthur Smith's tenure as head coach. If Baldwin impresses in his upcoming workout, he'll have a chance to factor into a crowded Steelers depth chart at wide receiver with the preseason just around the corner. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Dalen Baldwin? Leave your opinion in the comments.